You're watching Monty TV. I'm Jackie Karsh, sitting down now with Dave McLeod. He is the CEO and co-founder of the group conversation platform, Thought Exchange. Dave, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Yeah, great to be here. For people who don't know what Thought Exchange does, how do you use crowdsourcing to help inform companies and organizations? Mm. Uh, imagine that you can ask an open-ended question to anyone from 10 to 10,000 people. So imagine you could just reach out to people to say, hey, I've got 200 salespeople, what can I do to help you sell faster? Instead of having to hire fancy people to figure out how to solve that problem, you can literally ask everybody and they'll tell you everything they need to succeed and then you can listen to them. Or in the public sector, uh, if they're trying to do things like build a new high school and they want the public to fund it, you can say, hey, what sort of things would you like to have in this school? And you can crowdsource that from 5,000 people. And then when they see that their ideas are incorporated in the design of something, they're very likely to help you, know, help you fund it. Why does crowdsourcing work so well? A uh, waiter comes up and says, hey, to a group, what would you like to drink? And people say, you know what, I like a beer. Sure, beer, beer, yeah, why not have a beer? And someone says, I don't know, I'm in Santa Monica, it's beautiful, I like a margarita. And then everyone goes, you know what, I would also like a margarita, can I change my order? And the group found one idea, and they said, actually, that idea was better than what we said our first thought, best thought. So why crowdsourcing is, works is that you get not only the most common thoughts from people, you actually get what's important to people, and it's the people themselves that tell you what matters. So they feel good doing it. So it's about an, kind of an ownership in the result? That's right, ownership in the result, because they actually were able to contribute their thinking, but more importantly, um, they're able to think about what other people are thinking. So the magic of crowdsourcing thoughts is you say your thought, but then actually right away you consider that maybe as you're reading other people's thoughts one at a time and you don't know who said them, all your biases are gone, you're just interested in, hey, there might be better ideas than mine, and you're learning and you're empathizing and, and you're able to actually expand your thinking about any, any sort of topic. I can see how that works maybe in the nonprofit world or in the government world, but what about employees? Aren't employees a little bit concerned about putting their honest opinions on the line? When we brought this product to market, you know, almost 10 years ago, uh, we got some strong feedback. One, leaders, frankly, don't care enough about what people have to say. And two, the idea of people seeing each other's thoughts is crazy. Like, they'll never, this will never work in, a, in an organization. Um, fast forward 10 years later, all of a sudden, A, leaders desperately want to hear from people, and B, the fact that people can see each other's thought, they know that that builds trust in an organization. But when we first made the, the platform, we actually had names associated with thoughts, and we learned something interesting, is that when you'd send out a thought exchange, not that many people would participate. Um, and we thought, well, maybe they're too busy. Uh, then we took their name off, and we said, ask that same question, but it's anonymous now, and no one knows whose thoughts are being rated by who. All of a sudden, everybody wanted to participate. You have big companies that use your technology, Allstate, American Airlines. Then you also have universities and local governments. How do you cater your technology, your product, to work for all those different entities? The simplest answer to that is that it's, it's such a simple idea that we don't have to change it at all. The questions change for an organization, but the technology is pretty simple. Whether you're a, a university VP, whether you're a sales revenue leader, or whether you're a superintendent of a school district, you ask things like, hey, what are the challenges we might be facing? Everyone shares thoughts, they rate thoughts, you learn what matters. The platform doesn't change all that much, um, but the questions change based on who we serve. I think a lot of people might think, oh, this seems like a really simple idea, but what is the technical behind all of this? Because not every Tom, Dick, and Harry can come up with this thought exchange. It's, it's kind of like a really simple idea hiding in plain sight that just required execution to pull it out. So there's some things about thought exchange. If you ask a thousand people to say, hey, what do you need to succeed? Everyone shares thoughts, but then what our technology does is it makes sure that all of those thoughts get seen equally by people. So in Reddit, I don't know if you know about the Reddit phenomenon. If you ask a question on Reddit, the chance of the first 10 responses, one of those is gonna come up as the very most important thing, because the first one in always comes to the top. So with Thought Exchange, we make sure all the thoughts get seen an equal number of time. Everyone looks at thoughts one at a time. They can rate every thought. When you ask the question, people are asked to not only share what they think, they're also asked to describe why that thought is important. It's basically, it starts on the nuance of how the interface works. It's a UX problem. And then the things that um, we are most proud of is things like an algorithm that'll figure out, you know I gave you that example of the beer and the margarita? 
It'll say, hey, you know what? Beer is not the best drink. Margarita is, but it might find out that that person that loves beer, they hate margaritas. But what our technology does is actually go, you know what? If you needed to give a drink that made everyone happy, a gin and tonic actually is rated relatively high by the whole group. And so we literally have algorithms that find common ground between people in real time. And why that's important is, you know, if you're a civic leader having a conversation about something, you need to find what brings people together in increasingly political times. Or if you're a leader of a corporation and you have people that are very dug in on a problem, you need to figure out what thoughts do they both feel that are important, even though they might not agree on some other, you know, critical divisive issues. So you're the great equalizer. We are the great equalizer.